right, let's get started tonight. Hymn number 477. If you're able, let's stand. 477. My hope is built on nothing less. The solid rock. 477. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On that second, when darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On that last, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. All right, let's remain standing. We're going to look at the Lord in prayer. Boys and girls, y'all can come on up. Let the boys and girls kind of get in place here. It seems like that kind of works out, works out good for us. And that is a blessing. Amen. Great services this morning, and we thank the Lord. Uh, they talked to Jake this afternoon. They were trying to have 100 this morning. Had 122. Amen. Had two saved today. And so uh, to God be the glory. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. And them raging Cajuns, they need Jesus. Amen. So anyway, you keep praying about all that. And uh, that's, that's a wow, isn't it? I mean, he's just coming out of the gate, but Lord's blessing. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. So anyway, we're glad you're here tonight in the house of the Lord. Continue to pray for the Mike Howell and Miss Linda. We mentioned them this morning and that God would be with them. And, and uh, Brother Mike um, he had got some pneumonia, he was in the hospital and got COVID. I mean, he just got a lot going on. And Miss Linda needs our prayers as well. And she's been getting tested and all that. But um also pray for the for the family that we talked about. Uh, of course, Miss Billy Keeler's uh, stepdad passed away. We we'll pray for the, her family, and then Miss um, Wilma Bark will be having heart cath in the morning, and Miss Deanna on Tuesday morning. And uh, so, just a lot going on. Then pray for those families who've lost loved ones: uh, the Jerry Wayne Gwynn family, and then uh, the uh, Broach family, the Matthew Broach family. And uh, just those that have lost loved ones recently, that God would, would comfort them and bless them. Brother John Osgood, won't you come on up, Brother John, and pray for us. Brother John preached this morning at Felsendahl Baptist, and pray, praise the Lord for that. And we're glad to have Brother John and Miss Barbara, and they're some of our newest members. Amen. That's a blessing. And, and they're just enjoying, uh, enjoying the church here and all that. And God's good to us, isn't he? Sure he is. Aren't you glad you're at a church that really, I just think about this a lot of times, you know, that just understands uh, you know, Miss um, Stephanie's dad said to me one time, uh, Steve McKinnon, we were fishing together, and he said, uh, he said, Preacher, if I, if I believed it like you did, he said, I'd be telling everybody about the Lord. And, uh, you know, that's really what we're supposed to be doing, y'all. We're really supposed to be telling everybody about the Lord. And uh, I'm glad that he, he understood that that's where we're coming from here at our church, you know, whether it's around the world or down the street or across the state or, you know, on the other end of the United States. We just want people to be saved. Amen. We really do. And I just feel like that's what the Lord's all about. He just wants people to be saved. That's the whole premise of Christianity. It's why we pass out tracks and run the buses and go to jail and do all the things we do, you know, knock on doors. I mean, and we just want people to be saved. Amen. I like that song they sang this morning, Just One More Soul. Or to walk down the aisle is worth every, I mean, it's worth it, y'all. It is. Our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. It's not. Brother John, you come pray for us. Could I, uh, I got, I had a blessing. Yeah, go ahead, carry the blessing. Uh, I went home today to my church down there in Huddick, and uh, I was very blessed. But it, it hurts my heart when I walked in and 
started the services this morning because there was only six people. Yeah. Six people. It's a big church. Big church. I used to have, I went to Sunday school there in church, and a lot of my uh, classmates went there. No children. Mm. No children. Uh, and it's sad. But I had a sermon. And I don't know if you've ever done this, Brother J.D. I had a sermon. Mm. I never even looked at my phone. Mm. Because the people that were there, I grew up with their sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And I just told mm -hmm. what God had done for me. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. What he, how he worked in my life. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing. Because it was just like fellowship with mm -hmm. my sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could talk about it. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good stuff. It's a good blessing. Yeah, it was a very good blessing. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for your mighty hand. And dear Lord, and, and thank you for the, the people you place in our lives to tell us about you. The Sunday school teachers, the ministers, the moms and dads that take us to church and and help us to learn about God. Lord, it took me almost 40 years before I gave my life to you. But through the people that you put me around taught me about your saving grace. Lord, I just praise you that you place those around me and I ask you to be with them and bless them. Most of them's gone on to be with you. But, Lord, I know they're with you because they told me about your saving grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We'll hear the boys and girls sing now. Only a boy named David. Only a little sling. Only a boy named David, but he could pray and sing. Only a boy named David, only a boy named what? Only a boy named David, but five little stones he took. One little stone he went to sling and sling went to the ground.
Um, I'd like to give a testimony real quick. Yeah. So this is one of my favorite songs. And it's because it talks about what the Lord's done for us and how much we have to be thankful for. Y'all get to hear this song one time. I just had to practice it in the youth choir three times. And it just kind of builds and builds. And, you know, um, as a man, you try to hold all that in. But I just felt like the Lord wanted me to just say something. And I just want to say that I'm thankful for everything that the Lord's done for me. And, and I don't ever want to be ashamed of that. This song says, for all he's done, I want to lift my hands and praise yeah, him. And, and I don't want to be ashamed. I don't ever want to be ashamed of the Lord. And I hope that that's your attitude and your spirit tonight, too. And I feel like it is ours up here. And I just hope this song's a blessing to you. Forty-one, four hundred and forty-one sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me, and with the sunlight of His love did all my darkness flee. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love within. Let's sing that last. Soon I shall see him as he is, the light that came to me. Behold the brightness of his face throughout eternity. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love within. The 
Father, thank you. You may be seated. We'll have the ushers come forward at this time, and we'll receive our evening offering. Oh, I'm sorry. Ushers, y'all sit back down. We'll have boys and girls come. We're going to take our pocket change offering first. Boys and girls, y'all come quickly. And I forgot about the pocket change offering. And Lots of boys and girls. And you kind of spread your offering out, if you don't mind, and that'll be a blessing. And Miss Kay is in the back. Those of you that are going with Miss Kay, she has the children's class tonight, and that'll be a blessing if you if you dump your cups. Those of you that are going that way, I know she'll have a good lesson for you, and that'll be good. All right. Let's go ahead and stand together one more time, and we're going to sing number 448, and you can be turning there. Number 448. I'll be true, precious Jesus, I'll be true. That's a mouthful. I'll be true, precious Jesus, I'll be true. Let's sing it together. I'll be true, precious Jesus, I'll be true. I'll be true, precious Jesus, I'll be true. There's a race to be run. There's a Let's sing our third, I'll stay true. I'll stay true, precious Jesus, I'll stay true. I'll stay true, precious Jesus, I'll stay true. There's a race to be run, there's a victory to be won. Every hour by thy power, I'll stay true. Let's sing others, let's sing our theme song, others. We'll be talking about that today, letting our light so shine, so that'd be good. Others are out on the raging sea, lost in the darkest eternity.
You may be seated, and we'll have our ushers come forward now, and we'll receive our regular Sunday night offering, and um, praise the Lord. If you need an offering, you look, slip your hand up, and these fellows will get one to you, and uh, we were praying for Miss Frida this morning, and Miss Peggy said she's woke up feeling better today, and so we thank the Lord for that. Amen. That's a blessing, and... Um, Pray for Melvin, we mentioned that, and, and uh, Johnny Corley, also on dialysis, and, and um, Billy Williams in ICU, and, and then the, the Sharon, uh, Miss Sharon, Fant, that's Miss Billy Keeler's um, um, stepdad passed away. Pray for that family, that God would be with them and comfort them. All right. It's good to have visitors here this morning, and we thank the Lord for that, and that young couple here, Logan uh, Wilson and Brittany and their son uh, Bridger and uh, he played ball with Cooper and little David Reed so that was a blessing but in that blessing just pray, praise the Lord always good to have visitors boy if we have visitors here we need, sure need to flock around them let them know we're glad they're here okay and and uh, the lady who's been coming in the back there that's uh, uh, kind of sitting by herself that's John Brumley's wife Elaine Brumley and, and uh, she lives uh, here in the area and, and um her husband passed away, John passed away, and her son, John John, passed away years ago. We preached his funeral. But anyway, I sure was glad to see her coming the last few Sundays. And it's good to see Miss Alice Brewer here this morning, the Filipino lady. And uh, it's a blessing. So anyway, but I'm glad to see all y'all here. Amen. It's a blessing. I'm glad to be seen myself. Amen. And uh, so to God be the glory. My mother-in-law's here. Yeah, from Texas. That's a blessing. And so anyway, appreciate her being here. All right. Well, let's bow our heads. But B.B., why don't you step up here and pray for us? Can you do that? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, thank you for everything that you do. Pray you just bless the service tonight, and just pray you just bless the pastor as he gives us a, your message. Just pray for the offering. Pray, thank you for for all you've done in our lives, Lord. Pray you just bless the service, and you and I pray, Amen. Amen. Be, uh, I'm going to be attending. I'll be here Wednesday night preaching out of Proverbs, and then um, on Friday we're going to head out. And I mentioned that uh, Brother Clemenson, my preacher friend um, in Stockton, Missouri, with the boys' home, he passed away. He'd been real sick, and and um, I love Brother Clemenson. He's just a, just a humble servant of the Lord and a good man. And uh, we've been going there for years and preaching to them boys at the lockdown facility for juveniles and. And uh, several, Brother Leon McGee was on staff there for a while, but David and Jessica Dedman were there for a while. And, and right now, Brother Dirksen's still there. And then also, um, Brother Chris McElroy and, and, and Abby, they're, they're serving the Lord. And so anyway, uh, we've been connected to, to that home for several years now. But anyway, pray for the, the, the home there and Brother Clemenson's family and that God would just give grace and comfort. His funeral's on, on Saturday morning at 10. And so we did a little check-in. It's like 102 miles from... Where that funeral is going to be, to where the uh, to where the in, in Kansas. I've never preached in Kansas before. But I'll be in Parsons, Kansas, and a Pastor Darren Dusher. If y'all remember back earlier this year, his and his wife came and set up here, and and uh, they were kind of celebrating their anniversary. And uh, he didn't teach or preach or anything. They were just kind of vacationing a little bit, and we just kind of loved on them a little bit. But uh, I'm going to be doing a missions conference there at their church. So these missions conferences we don't take lightly. And uh, we just feel like it's a, it's a gift that keeps on giving. We go and challenge and encourage and churches to give more and, and to missions, faith promise missions. And, and God has used us in a lot of places and to help a lot of people to understand the concept of giving to missions, okay? And so 
We don't try to razzle-dazzle them, don't try to sneak up on them, but we just kind of teach and preach on, on faith, promise, missions, giving uh, in the course. And, you know, our, our missions conference here at Bible Baptist, it's, it's the highlight of our year. I mean, I love our missions conference. I love the missionaries. I love rubbing elbows with them, getting to know them and love them and get the burden of their heart. And it's that way when I go to other places. And, and uh, anyway, you pray that we can be a blessing there. But next Sunday, don't miss next Sunday because uh, uh, Brother Graham is a dear friend of mine. He's been a friend of mine for years. Love him. And... and um, He's a busy pastor, and uh, he started preaching when he was a teenager, preached his first revival when he was like 16 years old, and uh, he is a, he's a great preacher, and uh, him and his wife sing, and they'll sing some, and he'll just teach and preach and whatever he wants to do. Uh, I totally trust him. His church is the one that sends the Bible college every year to help us with our candy carnival, okay? And so uh, he recently uh, resigned his church, and his son Brandon took the church over, and Brother Graham is now traveling, just extensively traveling, and and staying very busy, as busy as he wants to be, I know, and, and uh, he's just a good man of God, so do not miss this coming Sunday. Bring somebody with you, and they won't be disappointed. I'm just telling you, he's a good he's a good one, and uh, so that'll be a blessing. So um, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn to Mark chapter number 3, Mark chapter number 3, and um, Mark chapter number 3. You know, I love to read the stories of the Lord Jesus Christ and the miracles that, that he, he did, you know. And in this chapter, you've got, you got the healing of the man with the withered hand, and the multitudes are healed, and, and um, you know, the twelve are chosen. And, and um, anyway, it's got a lot of different things going on here. And uh, Mark chapter number 3, and I want to, uh, a, a lot of criticism was being made against the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's always going to be opposition Man, my heart went out this morning just reading that prayer letter again of that man who was a Muslim that got saved by the grace of God. And just, just I mean, just his whole world was, so to speak, was turned, you know, I mean, they just, everybody turned against him. And he just had to, you know, but he's going to serve Jesus the rest of his life. And that's very, very powerful stuff. Amen. And to God be the glory. And the same thing was happening. There's always been opposition to the Lord and, and against him and criticisms being made against the Lord. The scribes uh, made Jesus of, of little worth, and they, they were telling people uh, that he was demon-possessed and just, just, just crazy stuff, and that's, that wasn't true at all. And uh, anyway, his mother and, 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 and his siblings, they heard uh, what was going on, and, and uh, anyway, they went to go uh, see Jesus, and, and uh, Jesus was doing ministry. Now listen to me. He was doing ministry. He was doing the will of his father, uh, but he was doing ministry to glorify God. And, you know, we want to be make sure, you know, we're not in the entertainment business when special music sung here to be a part of our choirs. It's all about him. Yeah. I mean, all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. I mean, he's the best thing that ever happened to any of us. And all the glory uh, goes to God. Amen. And we got to be real careful about that. And... Um, when he was told that his family was waiting to see him, uh, he made an important statement, and I, I want to look at that tonight, a very important statement uh, as to the will of God and, and uh, the kind of people who honor him, okay? And I want to begin reading in verse number 31 of Mark chapter number 3, and, and the Bible says, There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answering them, he, and he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother. And my brethren. Now look at verse 35. I mean, if Jesus was standing here tonight in my stead, he could say, Behold, behold, my mother and my brothers and sisters are here tonight. I mean, that's what we are when we do his will. That's who we are when we do the will of God for our lives. This is awesome. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same, the same is my brother and my sister and my mo and mother. 
Let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Father, we love you. I pray for Brother Mike and Miss Linda tonight, Lord, and Lord, for those that are Miss Wilma Barker having her heart cath in the morning, and Lord, Miss Deanna, whatever the need is, Lord, if they need stents, or Lord, just to go in and see what's going on, Lord, I pray that you'd help the doctors to have wisdom, Lord, to know how to, how to help them, Lord, and these dear families, Lord, the Jerry Wayne Gwynn family, and Lord, Miss Billy's family, and Lord, uh, the Broach family, Lord, and uh, I pray for these different ones, Lord, you come alongside in comfort, Lord, and I know we have a lot of other people, Lord, that are sick, and other families that are hurting tonight, Lord. And God, we ask you to come alongside and help and give grace and comfort. And Lord, we need you tonight. But Lord, we, um, we want to let our light shine. Yes, we do, Lord. But we want to do your will. Lord, we want to, we want to be identified with you, Lord. We want there to be some uh, distinguishing marks, Lord, that people would know by our, the way we live, Lord, the way we act, the way we... Uh, conduct ourselves, Lord, that, that we're not like we used to be. And, Lord, that they could see that, that you've made a difference in our lives. And, Lord, I'm not even talking about necessarily lifestyle evangelism, but I think our lives are preaching a sermon. But, Lord, I pray that we'd open our mouths up and speak up for you, Lord, and we'd leave no uh, doubt as to whose side we're on and, and whose team we're on and what we're about, Lord. And I thank you for, again, our church and the understanding of our church of missions and and reaching people with, with gospel tracts and spreading the good news. And, Lord, I thank you for the great day that you gave Brother Jake and them there in, in, in Lafayette this morning. And, Lord, Brother Burton Gates and Brother Aaron and, Lord, the, all the different ones out of our church tonight that uh, we've had a little part in their lives. Lord, they're a big part in their lives. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, and thank you for what you're doing here in our place. Bless this message now to our hearts and bless the fellowship that will follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Let me give you a, a couple things here tonight, and uh, one, the, number one is the, the concept concerning the will of God, okay? A lot of people, you know, they don't really act like the will of God you know, is something like they can't really understand, but the will of God is God's best for you. God wants what's best for you, and God has a good and acceptable and a perfect will for each of our lives, and to me, the happiest people in all the world are the people that are just living the will of God, doing God's reading their Bibles and praying and walking with the Lord on a daily basis and just doing the will of God for your life. It's not rocket science. It's not, you know, uh, so he's not trying to razzle-dazzle us. He loves us, and he just wants us to do right, amen? And, and, and it's a blessing to do the will of God, okay? And when we're, when we're in the will of God and doing it, we find ourselves at our maximum performance. Man, I just want God to get everything out of me that he wants out of my life. I, I don't want there to be somebody that, that dies and goes to hell because I was over here doing this and that when I should have been doing the will of God for my life. Are y'all listening to me? I mean, I want to. I mean, I want to be hitting on all cylinders. I want our church to be hitting on all cylinders. And and again, when we do His will, we declare that we're not going to be like the world. I, I was talking. There's a lot of things that are done in the name of Christianity that aren't very Christian. There's a lot of stuff going on in churches today that doesn't have very, very little to do with the good Lord. And I'm just telling you, uh, that's not right. And we have to be careful. There's a lot of worldly churches today, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And what I mean by that is that, that God, the, the foremost attribute of God is His holiness, and He wants us to be holy. But what happens is if the world is moving and it's getting worse and worse, if the church just keeps that same distance from the world, eventually... The church is where the world used to be. Well, that ain't right. You know, I mean, I'm just telling you, as a child of God, we've got to drop our anchor and we've got to be holy and be steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. And the world's going to just keep on going. I mean, they ought to be miles and miles on down the road from where we're at because we're just, we, we done dropped our anchor and we're sticking with the good Lord, okay? But what a lot of churches do, they just kind of, they just keep that distance thinking it's okay. And then you wind up with a bunch of churches that are just, they're, they're carnal. They're full of fleshly controlled Christians instead of spiritual Christians. And everybody goes to church for social reasons. It's like a glorified big social gathering. No, man, I'm telling you, God wants his youngins to be holy. Amen. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. So there ought to be some, uh, some uh, character 
characteristics uh, that would identify us that, hey, that we would be known that, hey, uh, you know, that we're God's children, okay? And when we do His will, we commit our lives uh, to be renewed in our minds on a daily basis, amen? The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good except on perfect will of God, okay? Our, our, our renewing of our minds to be more like the Lord, amen? I don't know about you, but man, there's a lot of stuff in the world that gets my mind, you know, through the eye gate or the ear gate or whatever to get, my, get me off track and I'm over here when I ought to be over here. Are y'all with me on that, okay? And so again, uh, the concept concerning the will of God. Number two, the compliance concerning the the, work, the will of God. The compliance, okay. The will of God is our it's our reasonable service, okay. It's our reasonable service. You know, we see somebody that we would maybe call today, man. Wow, you know, he's on fire for the Lord, or she's on fire. That might be terminology, man. They're just really going all out for the Lord. You know what the Bible calls that? The Bible calls that reasonable service. We've gotten so far away from reasonable Christianity. That when somebody's actually living like they ought to be living and doing what they ought to be doing, it kind of like, whoa, wow, he's really, you know, that's praise the Lord. Hey, listen, I mean, I'm glad, but that's really what the Bible calls reasonable service. We all ought to be on fire for the Lord, so to speak. I'm glad I ain't going to hell no more. And he's the best thing that ever happened to me. And, you know, I mean, I, I, mean, I ought to be doing my reasonable service for him. I mean, that, I mean, that sounds like reasonable service sounds like, you know, that's the least we ought to do in light of all he's done for us. But when we're doing the will of God, our spirit will be something like this. Not my will, Lord, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. And that's exactly what Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Wow. 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 The healing of the man on the Sabbath day, you know, Jesus was going about and, and healing people. And, you know, that defied the tradition of, of the religious hypocrites of that day. But, hey, Jesus was just doing the will of his Father. He was just doing the will of God. And I'll tell you, I'm just going with Jesus. Amen. Number three, we see the closeness concerning the will of God. Now, you think about this. Like, uh, you know, it, it's like Jesus is saying, you want to know who the people are? that resemble me the most? Do you want to know who the people are that resemble me the most? Those believers who are doing the will of God. Hey, that's us. That's uh, those of us that, that man, I mean, we, we've got our sins confessed and we're reading our Bibles, we're praying, we're passing out, we're talking to people about the Lord and and, and you know how that goes, man, when, you, you know, when you're rolling for the Lord, I mean, you're rolling for him. It, it's, it feels good to pass out tracts and talk to people about the Lord, and you're not ashamed of him. And, and then there's other times, man, when you get to where you're not hitting on all cylinders, and you're kind of, and man, you don't, man, uh, you know, and you don't really, you're not, you know, you're just kind of, you're, you're, you're not where you need to be with him, and everything else in our lives gets messed up. Let me say that again. Do you want to know who the people are that resemble me? The most, Jesus says. The people that resemble Jesus the most, Jesus would say, are those of you who are doing the will of God for your life. Wow. I, I, I really like this, uh, this little statement here at the end there. It says, the same. For whosoever shall do the, the will of God, the same is my brother, is my sister, and my mother. Wow. Hey, you want to feel the closest to Jesus? You know, I'm just do, just do His will. I, I, I mean, I love the song we sing sometimes. He loves me. He loves me like I was His only child. Amen. God really loves me. Well, I'm glad He loves y'all, but I mean, I feel like He loves me like I was His only child. And I know I'm not His only child. What does that mean? That just means I feel special to Him. Amen. I mean, I just feel that close to Him. You can feel that close to Him, too. It doesn't have anything to do with being a preacher. It has to do with just being in the will of God and doing the will of God for your life. We can't all be the preacher. No, I mean, I thank God, you know. I mean, hey, listen, thank God for, for everybody, amen. We're all a part of the body. We all got a function to do, a part that we can, you know, our part. And, you know, I mean, man, what a blessing to be on the team. 
Amen. To be a part. Amen. To be, it don't matter if I'm the pinky or the thumb or, or whatever, man. I'm just glad to be a part of the body. Amen. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Turn to Psalms 37. Psalms 37, very quickly. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. We're going to have fellowship here in just a minute. Psalms 37. And, uh, Psalms 37, and look at down verse number 23. <clears throat> I'm glad that God has a custom designed plan of action for, for us as his children. I mean a custom designed plan of action. You're talking about a good, acceptable, and a perfect will. That sounds pretty custom designed. I mean, that, you know, a good, acceptable, and perfect will for each of our lives. Look at uh, Psalms 37, look down at verse number I knew that didn't look right. That was Job. Let me get to Psalms. Psalms 37. Now verse number 23. The steps, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Oh, yeah. And he, the Lord, delighteth in the way. When you and I are going the right way and doing the right thing, hey, the Lord delights in that. I'd like to please the Lord. I'd like to glorify God in my body. And, and what a blessing, what a blessing. And so there's a peace, there's a satisfaction, there's a contentment when we're just doing the will of God for our life, okay? And that's a big deal, okay? That, that's a big deal that you and I would resemble, resemble. My daughter Janine, was. Uh, she sent me a picture of my sister, Viola and uh, my, my sister Viola, the, one of the pictures she sent me, there was a very strong resemblance in my, my sister in that picture and my mom. She really favored my mom a lot. And my sister, uh, and Janine was pointing that out. Wow, she looks a lot like Granny. A strong resemblance. Hey, listen, wouldn't it be good? Wouldn't it be good? If our friends and family over Thanksgiving and Christmas, if they could just see a strong resemblance, a strong resemblance in, in, uh, in how we look and, and how he is, you know what I'm saying, that they would see him in us. Are y'all with me in that? That they could just see a sermon? Brother Henry Corley, Brother Henry, uh, I would go and pray at their family reunion for years he and Miss Nader would host the Corley family reunion at their home and, and JJ's barbecue would cater it and all that well one year uh, Mark and Tim or the Corley's two sons uh, they were all kind of had tummy and and, and, and old Mark kind of had his or not Mark but uh, yeah Mark no Tim Tim had his tummy kind of pooched out and he said Corley 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 and they all three had kind of like them tummies all kind of looked the same and I was laughing Corley 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 well hey wouldn't it be good if, if somebody could see something in us, just like Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hey, that would be a blessing. Oh, that they could see him in us, a resemblance. Why? Because of how we lived our lives in the will of God. And I, I like that, man. It's just it's, it's speaking to my heart. My, the same is my brother and my sister and my mama doing the will of God. Let me run down this list real quick. And I'm just going to read these to you. And there's 13 of them, but I'm going to read them real quick. If you're taking notes, you can write these down. But um, Number one, <clears throat> we're the sons of God. And John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You and I have been called the, the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. We're brethren. Psalms 133, 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren, brethren to dwell together in unity. We're called the people of that way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. People of that way. What do you mean that way? We believe in the virgin birth. We believe in the virtuous life of Jesus Christ. We believe... Uh, in the vicarious death of Christ, in the victorious resurrection, and, and uh, the very essential intercession of Christ, the visible return of Christ, the verbal inspiration of the Bible, 
who believe in victory only through Christ. We're called, we're called saints of God. We're called saints. Ephesians 5, 3, But fornication all unclean, and, uh, and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. We're called Christians in Acts eleven twenty six, number 5, And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. We're called disciples in Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We are ambassadors for Christ in 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God. We are called fishers of men in Matthew 4, 19, and he saith unto them, Jesus is speaking, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. We're called soldiers in 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We're called sheep in John 10, 27. Jesus is speaking. He said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. We're called stewards in 1 Corinthians 4, 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. We're called kings and priests in Revelation chapter 1, in verses 5 and 6, and number 13, the last one. We're called servants in Romans 6, 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life you know I think tonight it would be good to gather around and say Lord wow I, I, I'd like it to be Lord that that I could resemble you Lord that I could just be in your will and, and hitting on all cylinders Lord and, and when I'm around people at Thanksgiving and Christmas that, that I may be not around all the time that, that Lord that, that it would be like I was your sister and I was your brother I was your mama Lord because I'm doing your will for my life right now and I pray that other people would be able to see you in me and I'm going to tell you something I, I'd like to live up to my name amen I'm a Christian I'm a child of God I'd like to live up to my name I'd like for you to live up to your name as a child of God I'd like to resemble him I'd like to resemble him People see Jake. Jake's red-headed. Jenna's red-headed. Joe and Jake are—I mean, Joe and Janine are not as red-headed. So, uh, you know, they may look more like they may resemble Miss Deanna a little bit more than than me. I don't know. But you know, if I brought my kids up and and, and me and Deanna were standing here, you could probably see some similarities. And and sometimes you can't tell, but sometimes you can tell. Sometimes they say uh, they used to say about Brother Bob, uh, you know, and my dad. They'd say oh, he's a chip off the old block. You ever heard that terminology? He's a chip off the old block. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would to God that we would resemble him. Amen. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. All I ask to be like him all through life's journey. Over hill and valley, all I ask to be like him. I want to resemble him. I want to resemble him. I want you to resemble him. Yeah. The same. He that doeth the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the same. Yeah. Let's do the will of God this week. And man, I've been over here in left field, preacher. I've been, I hadn't been doing it like I ought to. Well, let's get back on track tonight. Let's get back on track tonight. Get back to the will of God. Back to the will of God for our life. Let's bow our heads. Thank you for listening. Good stuff. Good stuff. <clears throat> Miss Crystal's coming. We'll play something softly. And and uh, <clears throat> how many say, preacher? Man, I want, I want to do the Lord's will for my life. I really do. I want to do his will. Would you pray with me? Pray for me, man. I don't always get it right, but I sure want to. God bless you. God bless you.
Man, we love you. God loves you tonight. I sure am glad he's a good God. He's the God of the second chance and the third chance and the fourth chance and the fifth chance. Father, we love you tonight. We sure do. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. And, Lord, there's always going to be opposition. And, Lord, it may get harder in the days ahead, Lord, for us just to do your will, Lord. But, God, help us to stay true as we sang a little bit earlier. I'll stay true, precious Jesus. I'll stay true. Lord, help us to stay true tonight, Lord, to your will and to your way for our lives, that good, acceptable, and perfect will for our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for the good singing tonight, Lord, and pray you bless the fellowship that will follow here in just a few moments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Maybe raise your hand. Maybe you'd like to pray there in your seat or come to the altar, whatever you feel led to do. And just say, man, Lord, help me to stay on track, Lord. I... I don't want to live my life in vain. I don't want to live my life in a sideshow. Lord, I just want to do your will for my life. That's what Jesus did while he was here on earth. It's exactly what Jesus did. He did the will of God. He did the will of his Father. Hmm. <laughs>